Hello everyone, it's Sean and welcome back to the channel again and continuing with our maintenance on our vehicles uh, we're going to pick up this time with the 2018 Volkswagen, Volkswagen Atlas this will be the vehicle my wife will be driving uh, as we move on to another state but uh, three things we're going to do on this vehicle we're going to do the, the air filter in the air filter we're going to do an oil change and we'll do spark plugs uh, on this vehicle as well. Now, uh, I, I do want to readdress something from the previous video with the Jetta. Uh, the main reason why those Autolite, um, well, the reason why those Autolite uh, spark plugs did not work wasn't so much the brand. When I went back and looked at the box on them, they were uh, double platinum plugs. Volkswagen specifically <laughs> runs if you look in those manuals, it, it's not going to do well on platinum plugs, even if they're gapped correctly. You need iridium. So, in, uh, in preparation, I made sure that, even though they weren't NGK, that uh, we would get uh, some iridium plugs to go into my wife's vehicle. And, then, you know, this time I'm not going to be chasing my, here we go, iridium. Uh, I'm not going to be chasing my tail, wondering why there's misfires and everything. Uh, but we've got our our oil filter. We've got our spark plugs and we've got our air filter and we'll do the air filter first because you know It's kind of on top here and probably the easiest thing to get to now If you're wanting to take some extra precaution when it comes to your air filter uh, You could loosen up this uh, this hose clamp right here and Take off this uh, this plenum or get it out of the way you would also need to disconnect uh, this guy right here by moving this tab out and then you could squeeze and, and pull this off, okay? But, uh, you know, I've worked on this uh, enough times now to know that I can kind of just leave this alone. Instead, I'll just loosen up uh, these screws that we have here that you'll need a T25 uh, Torx bit. And then I can just move this kind of out of the way and get the new filter in and the old one out. Now there are one, two, three, four, five, six, I think two more in the back. Yep, seven and eight screws that will need to be loosened up. They don't come all the way out, uh, but you, I mean, out of the uh, this housing here, they just unscrew from the bottom side. The uh, screws remain in the upper portion of the housing. But uh, once you got them loose, we can move it out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and then come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, and here we have it. Uh, like I said, screws don't come out the top, they stay in. Everything's moved aside. Here goes the old filter and we're replacing it with STP uh, air filter. Uh, you can see that make number, SA530. And it's just a simple thing. Old filter will come out just like so. And yeah, it's a bit dirty still a very good decent filter to use but uh what was this one uh, that's just still the oem filter uh last maintenance was actually probably done at volkswagen uh to replace that that filter <clears throat> but uh or i got it from volkswagen one or the other i can't remember been a while ago but uh here goes our replacement filter and uh, it's just gonna fall in like this. And we'll button everything back up and that's all it requires for your, for your air filter. Okay, moving over to the oil change. Just like with the Jetta, you're gonna have a splash guard underneath the motor. And that splash guard is being held in by the same style uh, screws that we had previously. Let's see, like that one right there. Uh, you got actually I can't remember if you unscrew the front so I'll have to check that again but I do know that you got them running lengthwise like this one right here all the way down on both sides of the vehicles all the way, all the way to the back you see it runs a lot further so we'll be removing those um, and that will get us access to the oil pan and our filter both of which will Need to be removed we'll drain from the oil pen again and then from the filter and i'll go over each one in a little bit better detail one thing i do want to make note of because i'm kind of remembering my way around here in addition to removing those screws using to make use of a 
T25 Torx bit. You're going to have these as well, several of them, uh, that also have to be removed for the uh, splash guard to be uh, replaced. Those use a T45. They'll need to come out too. I do want to annotate when, after I said no front screws, <laughs> it is quite possible, again, this is at the front of the vehicle, that at one point in time there might have been one screw right here at the front. So, before you go tugging on everything, once you remove the other screws, uh, just check there. Mine doesn't have it anymore, but, you know, I feel like this is worthy to know. Nope. If you need a visual representation, no, the front uh, screws didn't need to come out, but you got three that run down the side. Those three you see up top here on both sides. And then two in the back that are parallel with one another. Uh, and then three of those big screws, uh, kind of in a triangle shape through the center but uh, once you have those uh, fully removed you can see I slid our splash guard back got the oil catch can underneath here and we have our oil plug the uh, screw that needs to come out so the oil can drain sitting right there towards the top where you see that kind of diamond shaped thing going to what looks like the back side of a, a bolt or nut uh, that's going to take a, let's see, a 19 millimeter. And then, of course, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. No different than previously. Allow all that to drain. And then we can tackle the oil filter next. All right, so I've got the oil pan drained and the plug put back in. Now we can address the oil filter. And you're going to need two things, okay? You see that center piece there that has the... Uh, allen key that can fit into there or you're going to need a number six allen key okay so kind of a better design than on the uh 2006 uh jetta this 2018 atlas employs an allen key and this unscrews and that becomes the drain for the oil filter and then once that is drained out then you're going to need to get yourself a uh what is this a 36 millimeter socket uh, it's, looks like it's using a half inch uh, socket head that will go up onto the filter like this and then you're going to turn it counterclockwise to remove the housing and then we can replace the filter now when it comes to swapping out the filter uh, fairly straightforward thing just like previously however I, I do want to mention a few things that might make it a bit easier uh, one, you get, you got your O-ring just like last time. It's on this like very last thread. You're gonna have to replace that O-ring. Uh, but if you see, there's a kind of a kind of like a gasket nipple type thing on top. Even the old one. What I like to do is I like to get a bit of oil around that O-ring, and then I'll put the filter up into the uh, the filter where it's held uh, underneath the car. Okay. And I'll press this up in there to get it into place and then I'll take the cap and by the way before I take the cap took the cap off I put that drain plug back in uh, then I'll take the cap and then put it back up to the housing and screw it in place I want to make sure that this doesn't get uh, crunched or anything doesn't go where it needs to go it just always makes it easier for me to do it that way but I'm gonna get this swap back out uh, everything swapped over and uh, back in Okay, now I got the oil filter back in. Everything is closed back up. Again, I don't have a torque wrench, as I mentioned in previous video. So I get things snug and then try to do maybe a quarter of a turn more if it will allow me. I don't force it if it doesn't. Uh, we will now refill our, I've already got this unscrewed, our oil. I'm gonna do the five quart jug first. After I put five quarts in there, what I'll do is I'll start up the engine. I'll let that oil cycle through the engine. I'll check underneath the vehicle to see if there's any leaks in case if I need to tighten anything back up some more. If there's not, then I'll shut the engine off and I'll put this last quart in while checking the uh, oil dipstick here. I'll remove it, clean off the tip. But again, you know, I'm looking for the oil to be above minimum, below maximum. Well, um, pretty simple. Five quarts in, and then I ran the motor for a little bit, checked for leaks, none. Put the six quart in, we can see that we're right there where you see those perforated dots. 
at the mark we should be. So we're midways up, which means we're in a good spot. Now, I'll put back in our uh, oil stick. And um, usually what I do after I, and this is just me, um, after I do an oil change and everything's tightened up and put back together as it should be, I usually check everything again, maybe about a, a week or two la later, just to make sure the oil levels are still at the same spot. Um, you know, if they've gone down significantly, that tells me that something hasn't been tightened down the way it should. Uh, or if it's just a little bit low, that tells me that maybe I should have added a little more oil in. But, um, but yeah, after about two weeks, there's that. So what I'm going to do now is I, I'm going to get the splash guard back onto the vehicle uh, with all those screws sitting over there. And, uh, yeah, we'll move on to doing the spark plugs. And then we've got some VCS, uh, VCSD work to do, some programming. Yes, with all Volkswagens, it's not just as simple as an oil change. You know, reset the service light, reset the check oil light. All that stuff needs to get done, and you do it through a computer. Okay, right, now on the spark plugs. All right, uh, if your vehicle motor is hot, you might want to let it cool off for a while before doing this. Everything underneath the Atlas gets hot <coughs> inside of here, even like, say, the frame. Uh, so be careful of that, let it cool off. I had to take a quick intermission from the oil change to uh, go pick up my kids at school. Since I've got many kids, I had to drive this, so it's had to sit and cool off for a little bit. But uh, before you um, begin to work on or removing your uh, spark plugs, the first thing you're gonna wanna take off is this cover here. Uh, there's just a few metal tabs that you unhook and it comes right on off. Retaining plastic tabs, sorry, uh, in it. So uh, that's pretty simple. Get that off, get it out of the way. No big deal. And this allows you to, to pull up on these things here. Probably should have put gloves on for this. Uh, from there, you got to remove these connectors that you see here, okay? And it's fairly easy. Uh, you can, with your finger, pull up on this tab here. And then with your other hand, uh, you're, well, first you're gonna push down while with one finger pulling up on this tab and you'll hear it unhook and then you can wiggle it back up. If you have some difficulty uh, with that, another method that, that I use is I'll take like a small, what, 3.8 uh, open wrench and I'll use that to kind of pull up on the tab uh, right this way. And then I'll use a small, this is a broken screwdriver, but I'll use a small screwdriver to kind of lift up both ends, one there and then lift up on the other end. And once it's slightly up, then all you gotta do is just rock it the west, rest way off. So pretty simple process. I'm gonna get that done for all six uh, spark plugs and uh, come back and show you what's next. Now. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to remove these coil packs, um, these individual coil packs that go to each spark plug. They make a specialized tool for this. Uh, that essentially you get underneath here and then allows you to pull straight up on them to get them out. You're not gonna be able to get these out by hands. I would not suggest trying. If you don't have that tool, um, if you have something like a paint can opener where you know at the end it's got a little bit of a hook, you can get that underneath one of these edges and you can pull up from there. Uh, straight up. Uh, I used to have one. I'm not finding it right now. So what I'm going to attempt to do is just, and I've already got this first one off, is I'm just using an open end on a wrench and I'm just prying, getting it underneath the lip and using some leverage to pry it upwards. And then once it's loose, I should be able to take it out by hand like I did with this first one. Just a little bit of wiggle, 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 and there we go and it's out. Uh, once you have it out, set it aside, and if I can recommend any, something to, for you, is uh, when you set them aside, keep them in the same order in which you took them out. So I'm gonna get through and work on the rest of these and get those out as well. Uh, for the rest of these, since I don't have my paint can lid opener, <laughs> puller, whatever, uh, I'm having to use because there's uh, such a confined space in there, what I'm having to do is get underneath the lip of one 
start prying it up and then on the other side sorry that's not a shot uh, get underneath one side of the lip down here pry it up a little bit then the other one pry it up and just work it back and forth until it's loose and then i can pull it the rest of the way out something else worthy to note as uh, i remove these uh, take note that there is a rubber boot around them. They can come off and remain down there. You don't want to lose them. This helps keep dirt and debris from coming down the shaft of this and ultimately fouling up your spark plugs and getting into the motor. So when you take them out, make sure that uh, you get the boot as well if it's remaining underneath. You also don't want the boot to accidentally get pressed down into the same hole that the spark plugs in and end up in your motor. Uh, highly unlikely that would occur. Hopefully you would see it before then, but uh, make sure you're getting your these boots as well. And ultimately, you know, make smart decisions and be wise with how you you pry if you have to use a pry method. Uh, because you are dealing with your upper intake manifold and you can damage it if you're not careful. Uh, these center pieces, they're plastic, but if you were to break this, well, this is mostly a, a cover, but you know, it, you don't really want to break things. I kind of started to see that prying on this center one uh, was starting to fold that plastic a bit. So I took a different approach and I decided to grab these pliers here. And I'm not going to do a whole lot of torquing, right? I'm being as gentle as possible, but I'm going to wiggle it and then at the same time pull it up. Make sure that it's staying loose. Gotta be very careful because I don't want to damage the There we go. And she's out just like that. So I don't want to damage that where the uh, plug goes into. So be careful of that. Also be careful of your pins down here that you're not bending them. So just another method to add to this. Now I can work on removing the spark plugs. You can see that first one down in that hole right there. In a 5 8 uh, socket, I got one that has a rubber grommet in there that will uh, hold the spark plug and take it out of the out of its uh, basically that cavity down there. But uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty, as always. So we're going to loosen this up and we're going to get them all out of there, and uh, then we can start working on prepping our uh, spark plugs that go in to replace them. One of the first spark plugs removed, NGK with a VW brand on it. Uh, gap for your spark plugs is going to be 0.036 so i'm going to check it with a gap tool and then don't just throw the plug back in there as you work through this uh, last time i used a tad bit of oil i went back and because i got a bottle of this and took my uh, the spark plugs out of my jetta but any seeds lubricant you're going to put it on the threads right here this is uh here let's get it open And some silver type looking stuff but uh you're just going to rub it across your threads you know a nice coating across all your threads all the way around but um yeah let me uh make sure that this is gapped correctly we'll get the uh, threads lubricated we'll get that in there and again i want to note make sure you get iridium plugs not platinum or dual platinum uh need to be irid iridium plugs that's the reason why those auto lights didn't work in my 06 jetta uh, so long as they are iridium, they should work. Once I got them gapped correctly and I get a lubricant across those threads, what I do is I, I go ahead and put them back down into their socket. And I, I screw them down a bit, only to about just hand tight. I'm not trying to muscle these down into their socket. But uh, I'll go through once after I got all of them back in with the uh, socket set and tighten them a bit more. Uh, just like with the Jetta, I'm not gonna try to over tight to where, 100, where it's like I'm fighting against the threading. I'm gonna get them snug and then I'm gonna do them about yeah, one eighth to a quarter of a turn more and call it quits. And if I have to struggle to get to a quarter of a turn more, I'm not going to struggle because I'm just not going to turn it that far. So hand tight. And then uh, start working through the rest of your uh, spark plugs same same way. Got all the spark plugs up back in. I actually had to get two extenders because of how deep these uh, these cavities are that our spark plugs go in. But now I'm just going to do my tightening up. You see, it's about a quarter of a turn. I'm not going to fight against the motor to tighten. 
If I am, I'm probably over tightening. You see how loose that is there? So now it's kind of tight. And about an eighth to a quarter of a turn more. And I'm going to do that for all six of these spark plugs. And about an eighth of a turn from there. Okay, should be good. Now we need to take care of the boots. Give me a second. Okay, for our coal packs, I'm going to take and put just a little bit of dielectric grease down there at the very end. And then I'm going to reinsert them back down. Now, if you don't remember which way they're oriented, go to your uh, plug. It does not lie. And orient it the same way the plug is going to go down. And that should take care of it. Quick note for you, when reinserting your coil packs, uh, you, by hand you can get them down to a certain point, but trust me, they're probably not seated all the way. You're gonna feel a kind of a click in place once they're seated over the uh, the spark plug. So if you're using a socket set or something, uh, if you got a spare socket set or, or something like that, something that's got a flat perp, uh, flat end to it, uh, go across the top of the coil pack and just put pressure on the top evenly Cross the sides until you hear it feel it slide down and actually kind of click in place over the spark plug and uh, once you've done that you should be able to start reconnecting all your uh, connectors again after that I'm going to start the motor up it's giving me a uh, tension engine is running and just gonna let the motor warm up and listen to it at idle and if it has a rough idle, you're going to know. You're going to see the engine. It's going to rock. Might not be that exaggerated, but you're going to see it rock at idle if there's an issue. But uh, if I'm not seeing any rocking or anything like that, I know I've got my spark plugs gap right. The boots are all in. They're all firing. The engine sounds nice. So, all right. Uh, I think it's time to do the computer work and check and make sure we haven't thrown any codes. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm gonna have to get this uh, this lid shut, and uh, we'll start looking at uh, how to reset the, the check oil light and uh, how to reset all the service indicators. Okay, folks. Now that uh, everything has been taken care of, our filter, uh, air filter, oil change and filter, and spark plugs, it's now time to reset the oil inspection due. Uh, that's done without VCDS, uh, but we'll do the servicing through VCDS. I'm going to hold down this O button, uh, double O button, foot not on brake. I'm going to tap the start engine button. And then I'm going to keep this on here. Uh, it might take one or two tries. Hold on a second. I'm gonna turn everything off. Lock the door. All right. I'm gonna wait a few minutes, then unlock the door, open and shut the door again, and we'll try again. Okay. Now that all the lights are off, unlock, open the door. Shut the door again. All doors must be shut, including the, the front of the vehicle. The, the lid has to be closed. All right, holding this down, tapping the on button. Reset oil interval. Yes. All right. We should be good to go from there. Well, I kind of did this and thought I was recording, but I wasn't, wasn't paying attention to my phone. So I'll just kind of walk you through the steps. Uh, without my foot on the brake, hit the button to turn the vehicle on, but obviously motor is not running. Uh, Ross Tech uh, VAG COM cable going to the OBD2 port. Uh, open up VCDS. Now I've already did an RSI reset, so you can see all the va the current values that were in there, and uh, you can see that their new values have now been. Uh, zeroed out, but uh, just wanted to show that to say 
yeah this you need to do the RSI reset as well but before I do this what I do is uh, I go to my OBD2 function and I'm just going to make sure that there are no current DTCs and if there are I'm going to clear them out unless well if there are I'm going to troubleshoot and find out what that DTC is so long as that issue if if it's an issue that occurred after doing um, the maintenance on the vehicle now I get sometimes you have older vehicles that are going to have codes so I would suggest maybe uh, just looking at your DTCs before doing any maintenance so you know if you have called something or if if you so you know if you've called something called something during your maintenance but typically you shouldn't have any I'm going to check current DT, DTCs I'm going to check permanent DTCs and if it's uh, and I'm going to check pending DTCs you can see that there there are no codes there okay after that you just go over to RSI reset you're going to click it and it's pretty much going to do its own thing now this takes a little while so we'll sit through this so you can see how long it takes all right and now that it's all the current values now that they're all there uh, you can see where they've been reset again and we're gonna click done and go back that's pretty much all there is to it uh, you do those two things you reset your old warning and do your RSI reset and you're good to go so that being said thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please let me know in the comment section if it was helpful for you um, take care and goodbye Mark?